Women are panicking as their dating prospects decline. Women are panicking as their dating prospects decline. Today's video comes from the Destro Reborn channel. It'll be linked in the description. You can go check them out and support them. So women are beginning to panic as they get older and they're realizing that men do not want to approach them, speak to them, or have relationships with them anymore. Watch the end of the video to fully understand the implications women are facing as men walk away or go their own way. And now let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. I don't understand how some people find it so easy just to get into relationships. Where? Where's he at? Like, where are you finding these people? Because there's nothing going on here. For me, I don't have any children. And like, I'm thinking about myself like, wow, I'm going like, to be 35 in February. Oh, no. No children, I have no prospects, I have no man, no guy I'm dating, no guy I'm talking to, nothing. So all those things are always in the back of my mind. I'm like, wow. And here comes the rude awakening. Imagine retiring from a vigorous extended 304 phase, only for your dreams of a rich, 6'5, 8% body fat husband to be interrupted by the rude awakening. And here comes the rude awakening. Years of following the strict doctrine of leave no Chad or Tyrone behind. Yet now these Chads and Tyrones have somehow forsaken you. All your years of valor, your willingness to spread those cheeks in the wee morning hours for a coffee, an egg McMuffin, and a shot of some cheap Don Julio tequila. Imagine this is how they repay you for your services. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. What nobody talks about in adulthood is accepting the fact that some things or not meant for you either at this time or it wasn't meant for you at all a few moments later and it's hard for me right now to accept the fact that my plan was to be married have kids have a career before i turn 29 and i'm 27. i ain't got a little kid i ain't got a piece of land. i don't even have the seat in career and it's like messing with me so bad because it's like if I didn't have it when I planned it, will I ever get it? And then I'm thinking to myself, maybe, maybe some things that I want that I had planned are not in my cards or not for me. And that is something I, I'm struggling to accept right now. So before I accept that, I'm gonna finish this uh, Chick-fil-A ice cream. And here comes the rude awakening. See, the modern woman believes that the happy family is just a meal you can order at a Chinese restaurant. Just a quick pickup order on her way home to independent girl Nirvana. Not something she has to plan or work for. Most importantly, the happy family is nothing that she has to sacrifice for. The happy family will fall into perfect construction after her decade-long 304 phase. A few abortions, emotional damage, 30 plus pounds, and her subpar career path. You see, traditional women who strive for the goal of a true happy family have different motivations. For example, for example, for example. I was at the gym, I was like, I ain't doing cardio today, I'm good. And in my spirit, I heard, is that the body you want to give your husband? Is that what I want him to have? Not is that the body I want to give my husband? When you are loving from a whole place, there's a level of caretaking that I want to do for him and it goes beyond cooking and cleaning right but when he walks home and he sees me I want him to say that's fine I want him to be proud oh that's powerful do you not deserve this level of manifestation or are you willing to keep accepting the bare minimum from these women just for consistent sex now let me make this very clear this other woman she was tatted up I saw some tattoos on her shoulder, and I asked myself, is this woman even married? You see, you have to be very careful with modern-day women and what they're doing in Western society. I talked about it already a couple of times in a video where you have women from the Only Fools community, and they are now making content directed at the manosphere. And they're not going after just one specific segment of the manosphere. Oh, no, no, no. They are going after the passport kings. They are going after the M. So you know, passport MWAs 
or some MWAs are also passport bros, but they're going after the passport kings. They're going after the MWAs, men with alternatives, all right? They're going after they're going after the trad cons, all right? So the trad cons, they're they are these women are identifying as trad cons, all right? Or trad wives dressing up in cosplaying trad wives. They are going after almost every segment of the manosphere right now. Because the money is here, and then they are using their profiles online. They spout all of this stuff. They they regurgitate, you know, mimic what men have said, you know, is happening to them in society, and then they use that to direct men over to their profiles, where they basically hawk their wares or shill their wares. So you have to be very very careful when you see just about any of these women, like the one before. Oh, this is this body I'm going to give to my husband. Guys, she's giving it to Tyrone. She's giving it to Tyrone, okay? She's giving it to Tyrone and Little Poncho. Because they will say, women will say things, but they don't mean these things. If a woman has a great body, you think that she's going to only exclusively give that body to one man? When she can have whatever she likes? Get out of here. No matter how much a woman tells you that she loves you, never believe her. I'm going to be honest with you. No matter, because words are cheap. I've been there, but guys, listen to me. People will say, oh, you're a very hurt man, angry. No. One of the easiest things for a woman to do is to say, I love you. It's not hard for them. It is not hard for a woman to say, I love you. All right. It is much easier for a woman to say, I love you, than it is for her to say, I'm sorry. That's how women are programmed. That just shows you how cheap I love you actually is. I love you is just a means of keeping you locked in, of keeping you controlled, of keeping the wool pulled over your eyes. I can't reach men. A lot of men, it's impossible to reach them, especially married men. Because they'll do whatever they want. It's like, okay, you can do whatever you want, bro. But then when they get screwed, when their lives get screwed up, they want to come back and they want answers. And they want to come to old angry. And it's like, old, you know, Uncle Angry is, 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 is in his early 40s. And you're now pushing 60 years old. And you didn't learn these things growing up. And when Uncle, you know, and you were being, you're out there being a simp. And when Uncle Angry said, listen, bro, I could see things that you're not seeing. Women's what women say and what women do are two very different things. Like those kids, they might not even be yours. How dare you? All right, you're lucky that I don't throw hands right now. Okay, bro. And then when they find out that those kids aren't even theirs, and they find out that everything old Uncle Angry said was true, they come back like, "Hey, Uncle Angry, can we have a conversation for a little bit? Can you know, uh, my wife? So yeah, she was cheating on me." And those kids weren't mine. I don't even know when it started. Bro, I told you what I saw. You were ready to throw hands. You see, this is this is how men are. A lot of men get stuck in the reality that they want to be in. All right? It's not a, they don't want a reality based on facts. They want a reality based on fiction. You guys, there's always warnings. There's always things there but men don't want to listen they they don't want to see it because as long as their balls are empty and their belly is full they're willing to basically sacrifice and take any type of narcissistic abuse to make matters even worse a lot of men these women they don't even have that they don't even have full bellies or empty balls but they're now in these relationships and because they don't want to be alone they're willing to continue taking just about anything I had one guy in my comments, and many of you guys were very furious. A lot of the Sims, a lot of the trad cons, they were pissed off when this guy wrote in and he provided his story where he said that he was married. He has two daughters, I believe it's two Gen Zers, and they were driving him crazy. So he basically divorced his wife and he got the hell out of there. You know, and evidently it was not his wife so much why he why he left, but it was those it was those two girls. He said he couldn't put up with that anymore. And he said that they're still in his life. He's still in their lives. But, you know, he's he has them more at a distance and he's doing better. And people were so angry that he walked away from his kids. And it's better to walk away on your terms than to be sent away on theirs. A lot of men don't want to understand this. Men have this no belief that they are put here to be sacrificed. And if you that's if you live that life, 
That's what's going to happen to you. You are going to end up being a sacrifice for someone else. And then when you don't let, and then when it happens, you're like, oh, I don't like this. I don't like this, bro. You put yourself in that position. You have to realize that as men, we are constantly, and when I say this, I mean it, we are constantly being observed and being used for our value. We are, our value is being extracted from us around the clock. We are, guys, they are the society, modern women in society. They are preying upon us, okay? We are dealing with modern day predators. We are dealing with individuals that do not see us as human beings. They see us as subhuman, and our only purpose is to provide and protect and give our resources to them. They do not like us. The, there is nothing more hated than the man in Western and Westernized society. There is nothing more hated than the man, than the man, men are more, put it this way, men are more hated than cockroaches in Westernized society and Western societies, okay? That is how much we are despised, and yet they don't want us to go. They don't want us to leave. They're doing things to even restrict our access, our ability to leave Western society because they cannot survive without us. If they see us going overseas and getting women who are fit, feminine, and friendly, they begin shaming these women. Here's what's crazy. You have these women who are in these other countries, and they're absolutely beautiful. And these passport kings are going over there and getting into relationships with very beautiful women, women who are fit, feminine, friendly. And modern women in Western society, they look at these women and they begin saying that these women are poor, they're uneducated, and a variety of other things. They know that they're talking crap. They know that they're talking a lot of crap. But guess what? For them, there's like there are no consequences because the women in these countries cannot do anything to them. And the men who are going over there have no recourse to stop them. And if they do stand up to them, women in Western society will just start breaking down into tears and claiming to be victims. There was a video, there was an episode of Dr. Phil, I caught just a little bit of it, where a woman who had accused a man of, you know, grape, falsely accused him. She did, and she then confessed that, you know, she made the story up and Dr. Phil and, you know, she came on the show and immediately started breaking down in tears and crying like she's a victim. And the guy was basically had to just basically sit there and accept her apology because like she just, you know, she's like, I just wanted to clear my conscience and. Bro, you destroyed this man's life. I think he was in prison for, I don't know if he was in prison for like five years. His entire life was destroyed. And I, and I think they finally found out like the whole story was total BS when they looked at the videos and they were like, okay, yeah, this man did not do this. Case. She had destroyed this man's life. She destroyed this man's life. Okay? And it's, it's something that's happening around us constantly. And then when they get caught, what do they do? They break down into tears. They break down into tears and present themselves as victims. Women are powerful victims and men are pathetic villains. Guys, no one likes us. You have to understand, Western society, we are so hated in Western society that any evil that is done against us means nothing because the government is the main facilitator of these wicked and evil actions. Women are incentivized to... It, to, to, to basically destroy our lives using the criminal court system, using civil court, using using divorce court, using family court, because every all of these systems are put in place to reallocate wealth and resources from men to the state, and then women are rewarded for doing so by, by working and operating as agents of the state. Sims are exactly the same, all right? Sims are agents of the state. They do not like you, okay? We've all been simps one time in our lives, but you have to understand there are these men out there who will never change, all right? They will go to great lengths to destroy the lives of another man. And you might say, well, why is this? Why are these guys trying to destroy my life? The reason why is because they hate you. They hate you. They hate masculinity. They hate men, but they love money and they love, you know, kitty. And what happens is that by betraying men, by betraying masculinity, and by turning to the state, what are they do? What are they incentivized? They're incentivized to do this, and they're rewarded for doing this. They're given access to women. All right, a lot of these men would never have access in the first place because they are pathetic, sniveling little devils. All right, they have the Jezebel spirit within them, so they gain access to women. They get they gain resources from the state, 
and they gain praise and prestige by betraying men. So even though the average man might despise these individuals, it doesn't matter because the state loves them. And then there will, of course, be a group of a bunch of very narcissistic individuals with kitties that are like, okay, yeah, so we'll give you kitty because you are just you are helping and working to destroy men in society. You have to understand that. If you go back to the early days of radical feminism, if you go back to the 1960s, a large part of that, and 70s, a large part of that was basically saying that the male population should be reduced down to 10% so that it was easily manageable by women. This was a large part of women's empowerment, and they had a framework of what they wanted the future to look like. And I'll tell you right now, we were not a part of it. If men had ever launched such an evil plan, all right, we would never hear the end of it. But when women do it, it's a okay, all right, and there is no accountability for any of it. No one calls them out on it because the because the simps just want to be they just want physical intimacy and money, and they will do anything and everything to get it. You have to again, guys. You have to remember we are dealing with people who absolutely do not like us. All right, people who hate us. People who want to see us go away, but they want our attention, they want our time, and they want our money before they completely discard of us, all right? This is a narcissistic society that we live in. From the moment that most of us were born, we were already screwed. Our parents, our boober parents, for, the, for, for example, they stole our futures while we were in diapers, okay? A lot, guys, we didn't even, we did not even know, we did not even realize just how bad it was, all right? They took everything. They took everything from us while we were still in diapers. Or are you willing to accept some kids, some chronic itchy crotch? Where are you willing to draw the line in the sand and say, no, ma'am, I'm good? I'm good, good. In the past, like, three years, I've been on, like, two dates. Three dates. In three years. Like, where? But, oh my god. Like, I don't understand where I'm going wrong here. I've been on Hinge. Hinge doesn't work. Let me tell you that for now. Guys, here's where things get very interesting, because they think we're very stupid. And a lot of men don't read through the lines. So she's a fairly good-looking woman. She's been on three dates. She said she's been on, like, three days in the, last, in the past two years. But she doesn't say that she's only been physically intimate with like three guys or two guys in the last in the last two years. The reality is that a, a big portion of it is that these women are no longer able to even be in a stable relationship with a man because they're constantly getting their backs blown out. All right. So she hasn't had a boyfriend in years, but she's been actively looking for a boyfriend for years. Does that make any sense to you? And she's a fairly pretty girl. No, guys, and she's on platforms like Hinge. In other words, she's making, she's matching with dudes on Hinge, but she's but basically they're it's they're all one night stands. She's running around with Chad and Tyrone, guys. She has a, she has a pocket. She has a, a she has like a list in her phone of all the men that she's been with. She takes notes and she writes down the things that she likes about these men when she's physically intimate with them, and then she basically goes through the list, and she and then she hooks back up with the same dudes whenever she feels like it. And she's like, well, those guys are for physical intimacy, but the other men are for relationships. The thing is that she has such extremely high standards. Hear me again. She has such extremely high standards because all women right now, 80% of women on dating apps are all going for the exact same 1% of men. 1%, which means that they are eliminating 99% of men. And many of you hate to hear it. You do not want to hear those statistics. I'm not the only one who's talked about this, all right? There are a lot of women right now who are eliminating 99% of men. You're like, that's impossible, angry. It's not. And the reason why is because women have these checklists, of the, and basically a man has to have all of these traits. They have to have tons of all of these specific traits so there's two kinds of guys they're the chads that they're they're basically the pat the plan they're the plan s guys the guys that plan sensual guys those are the guys that they love those are the guys that they actually desire those are the chads tyrones ray ray spooky the rikis miguel's and little ponchos all right they love little poncho they love little poncho they love that fat little belly love that fat little belly the thing is that those are not marriageable men 
So those are the men that they call up to have the back blown out. They think we're so stupid because they're like, you have these women who are like, you know, I'm 30 years old and I've never had a boyfriend. Okay, let me ask you this one then. Okay, I got you. You've never had a boyfriend, but how many times have you had your back, have you had your back blown out? And that's where everything falls apart. Because the title reads, I'm a 30 years old and I've never had a boyfriend. It doesn't read, I'm 30 years old and I'm a virgin. Okay? Which means that along the way, she's been out there going back and forth with so many dudes that she can no longer engage in a stable relationship with any guy. She cannot pair bond with any guy. And there's a lot of negative and toxic energy coming off her. Off her. She does not know how to be in a relationship, nor can she be in a relationship, all right? She is the problem, and she cannot see this. No man on earth would ever make her happy. That's what's happening with a lot of modern women. This woman right here, she thinks we're stupid because we don't know all the details. But when you become experienced, once you start to learn a bit, when, once God begins to open your eyes and you realize and you come to understand that men and women are different and what and how women live their lives and the options available to women, you can then discern why women are still perpetually single, even though she's a pretty girl. And she's like, I can't find Mr. Right. Yeah, that's because you're looking for, you've been running around with Chad and Tyrone for the last decade, and you don't want to settle for just about any guy. How many guys have you basically, good guys, have you basically set on their own way? I mean, guys, this is how women operate, and they do not tell the truth, and then they hop on social media and pretend to be victims, like, you know, and it's 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 a total, it's total and utter crap. It's, uh, it's utter crap, guys. When you wake up, once God has opened your eyes and you understand men and women are not the same, men and women are different, that's when you're able to gain the knowledge of, yeah, she's, she's, she's basically for the streets. You know, she's from, it's from the streets that she came. It is to the streets that she shall return, and that's really it. There's nothing else there. You are not missing any other pieces of the puzzle, all right? She's just totally BSing and capping on this one. Capping equals lying, all right? That's what she's out here doing. Nothing lasts forever. Nothing lasts forever. And women were not going to be able to keep pulling this off forever because of the manosphere here and guys like Uncle Hangry here, this knowledge is getting out there. Trust the other dating apps, but Hinge is meant to be the one that people actually find people on. I've been on Hinge for like three years and I've been on three dates. And I have a job where I meet people every day. I have a TikTok so people can DM me and stuff. Well, where's he at? Well, here's a little secret. Whether consciously or unconsciously, women know the difference between having men in their DMs and having options. They know when they are part of some sort of equation where men determine if she's worth the time, money, and effort for a temporary dopamine release. Toxic thing one of my guy friends said to me this weekend is that instead of doing girl math, he has a version called boy math where he calculates how much money he's invested into taking girls out on dates and calls it cost per nut. Naturally, this is all tracked within an Excel spreadsheet labeled CPM. And perhaps the most important trend that you need to be seeing within your CPM is going down over time, both you as a person and your overall cost. And once you reach a certain level of cost per nut, you are eliminated from his repertoire because your cost is exceeding the value you bring. Brilliant. And I don't want to, I never want to be the kind of person where I'm like, uh, you know, I, I still have time. No, legit, I don't have time. Let's be realistic. As a 35 year old woman, I don't have time. My time is literally ticking. I'm single. That means I'm open to dating multiple people. I'm open to networking. I'm open to making new connections. I'm open to exploring different cities because I'm single. That does not mean that I'm looking for intimacy. It does not mean I'm looking for intimacy. In other words, Chad and Tyrone are there in the background. So she wants a man to provide for her, protect her, subsidize her living. But a man better not look for anything from her. All right. Don't even talk about physical intimacy. All right. This is about being an adult. This is about starting about being a part of a family and a unit. In other words, guys, she just wants to take advantage of you, but she does not actually like you. 
All right. Physically, a lot of women are trying to scam men into relationships while telling them that physical intimacy is not a part of the equation. Guys, if she is not attracted to you, all right, and she just wants you for your money and your attention and your time, you're an idiot to jump into a relationship. And the church will tell you, you got, you've got these lunatics running around, these lunatic pastors that are telling you that if you want an attractive woman, you are now committing a sin. Okay? You should not be looking for a woman who is attractive. Your mother was an attractive woman, and she took care of you and gave you everything you wanted. You should be looking for a woman that is going that you can that you can serve. You look for a woman who you who you can serve and you can provide for. That's what you should be looking for. That you can sacrifice for, not for a woman who is going to make you make you um make you feel uh feel desire for her. This is crazy. This is crazy, guys. These men, these are these are agents of the state. I warn you about these simps. These are agents of the state. They are not your friends. They are there to destroy you. They are there to disillusion you. They are there to rob you of your futures. These are terrible, bad individuals. They are not doing God's work. They are doing the they are doing the work of the evil one, and they have the Jezebel spirit within them. Come 2030, half of all women are going to be childless and single, and modern women don't seem to understand that that clock is ticking and it's running out. And for every woman that you see putting out videos like this, you're going to see many more saying that they don't need no man and they don't care. They'll be single forever. You're going to have women who are, you have women who are like in their 50s and 60s saying that their lives are wonderful and you know women women need to understand that they should not be afraid of being single for the rest of their lives because it's not even that serious and they need to stop putting up with these men because these men are really not that great guys these are women who are still getting their backs blown out by chad and tyrone at these advanced ages all right this is how these women operate but even though and then they cry themselves to sleep and you know what who gives a damn who really cares because you're dealing with people who absolutely hate you the truth is that in many ways, it works out better for men because why, you know, we're out here like, well, she should have said it'll settle down when she was young. But to be honest with you, God, you know what? Thank God that she never settled down with any man because if that's her outlook on life, that she would only be in a relationship with a man that she's trying to take advantage of. Look at Judge Mathis. His wife, after 39 years of marriage, is divorcing him because she's saying that he was not available enough in the marriage. That woman got, to, that woman is tired of that old man. That woman is tired of that old man. She's been tired of him for years, all right? And she's like, and she's been cheating on him for decades. She is 61 years old, and she wants, she's wanted, she mentally divorced that man decades ago. And she was only in that marriage because of the kids and utility. And now she's like 39 years. Guess what? She owns that man. That man is a slave, all right? Because she will go straight to the court. And she will basically say that she wants lifetime alimony and she will get it. She was married for 39 years. Once a woman has been in a relation for 15 years of marriage, very often they can request even up to lifetime, alum, lifetime spousal support. Yeah, once a woman has been with a man for a long period of time, she can, a lot of them will get lifetime spousal support. Lifetime. That man will be paying for them for the rest of his life. It will never end for him. Can you imagine such a reality where no matter where you are not required to pay for a woman for the rest of her life and you're not even you might not even be 60 years old yet? Or let's say you're 60 years old. And you've been with this woman your entire life. You've been with her your entire life. You're now 60 years old. You've been with her your entire life. And now at 60 years old, when you're pushing, you're, you're getting ready to retire, your 401k is now being slashed in half. Your, you know, your pension is being slashed in half. Everything you own is being slashed in half. The family home that you worked so hard to acquire, that's going to be sold. All right. All half of all your stuff gone. And now you will be responsible to pay for her for the rest of your life, okay? Even if you even if you say, I can't work anymore, they're still going to come after you. You are now a slave to the state and to this woman for the rest of your life, and women call that equality. But if a woman was going through that, if women were, if a bunch of women were being put in that position where they would have to pay for a man for the rest of his life, all right, for the rest of their lives, they would be freaking the hell out. They would be pissed the hell off. They would be going insane and saying how unjust this is because they don't care what happens to men because they're the ones facilitating this and doing this. 
women are aware of what's going on. Women do not like us. You have to understand, these people hate us. It is Guys, even our mothers hate us. Even our mothers who love us, they are part of them, hates us because we are men. All right? It is a deep and utter hatred for men. That's the society that we absolutely live in. And it's and it's the state pushes it, the Sims push it, and we are and we are caught in the center because we have to live this way. We have to live with it and be taken advantage of. And we're living in a place, we're basically an an enemy ter- we're in enemy territory. We are now being punished and persecuted for just the possibility of thinking the wrong thing. You heard me right. Look at the UK, where boys will now be reported to the Department of Terrorism if they are even suspected of being susceptible to mis- to extreme misogyny or the manosphere. So if they're even susceptible, they're suspected of even being susceptible to these thoughts. That's right, guys, to, to thoughts. They will be locked up. And I'm hearing stories. I'm hearing stories from people who work at schools and they're saying that any, that any kids who um, even mentioned the word Andrew Tate are being are being pulled are being dragged out of class and punished severely. Reported to the police. Reported to the police. Guys, this is only going to result in more boys saying that they do not want to go to school and dropping out of school. All right. You know, you can only what are you going to do, guys? When I was growing up, my life was horrible. My parents, my father, I told you, he almost broke my skull. Okay, I grew up in a whole different era. This era is just conti- it's just it's just a continuation of crap. Absolute crap. You have to understand that it, it, it's so clear that men and boys are more hated than anything else. And they just it just we live in a society that just wants to destroy us and demoralize us because men are the only ones who can stand up to tyranny. So you have to demoralize the men, you have to destroy the men because you know, if you want to destroy a country, if you want to control a country, you have to take, you have to destroy the men. You have to control the men. And if you want to destroy the men, if you want to control the men, you have to use the women to destroy the men. You have to use the women to control the men. Okay? It's a sick, sick thing. All this is going to lead to is more women who are childless, single, lonely, unable to provide for themselves because the state will not provide for them and 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 falling into destitution. All of these women who are strong and don't need no man, over the next five years, many of them are going to be in extraordinary states of poverty and destitution. Over the next 10 to 15 years, America is going to look like a, it's going to look like hell in America. It's going to look like hell in Western societies because you're going to have all of these women are going to be homeless on the streets and they're going to be screaming and hollering and there's not going to be any money because the more you tax men, the less money men will make. You've got Kamala Harris saying that they're going to put a 20, 28% capital gains tax. So guess what ends up happening? Men begin moving to the system of bartering like they used to. They begin trading their skills, skills and things that they make themselves for things that they want. That's what ends up happening. They begin doing sales entirely using cryptocurrency entirely okay there's no capital gains there because they've never they're not cashing out all right they begin moving towards a completely cashless society where they begin rejecting cash in and of itself they begin avoiding the stock market because if they're told that you're going to you're going to have to pay a 28 percent tax when you recognize your gains okay well 20 28 percent tax and let me tell you right now if they they'll go they'll go to 28 and then they'll work their way all the way up to 50. Men are gonna walk away. Men are gonna say, Yeah, we're not doing this. We're not playing this game. Two could two can play this game. It takes two to tango. All right. We will go and we will basically reduce our we will reduce our cost of living. To such a low to such a low point that now we qualify for public assistance. Now we qualify for Medicare. Now we'll go to we'll go to the food banks and men are and you see here's the thing about men. Men will wake up early into early in the morning. We'll get up at those early hours of the morning and go to the food bank and pull up at the food bank and load up our cars. Okay? Because we don't need much to survive. We'll buy a piece of land, get a shipping container house. 
and live on that live on that land in that house very comfortably while the world is burning down we'll set up some solar electricity panels we'll get our own septic tank all right we'll dig a well and we will be happy as pigs in mud and we will live simple lives of luxury and as women are like what's going on where are all the men you know things are going to hell the men are the men will just keep on disappearing more and more and more and that's what we, and then women are like and then when the state starts cracking down and the state starts doing things to women that women don't like and they're like okay well men need to come and handle this there are no men and men will say Listen, men, men just basically go radio silent or you'll have the dudes who are making fun of them on social media. Like, nah, ladies, you traded us for the state. You need to settle that with the state. And the same women will say, oh, yeah, we're going to use the state against you. That's exactly why we walked away. Women have made this decision. It's like they are they are basically destroying the lives of men while at the same time expecting men to come and rescue them from the decisions that they've made. That I'm being intimate with everybody that I'm that I'm dating. Translation. I'm 40 with a new wig and my BBL has finally healed because none of the men in my past saw me as marriage material. I have no other choice but to initiate another vigorous 304 phase. I will say publicly that I will be celibate for the most part because I don't want to actually sound like a 304, even though I'm a strong, independent, unapologetic black woman. I know that because of my BBL, wig, and eyelashes, most of these men only see me as a temporary sex partner. At this point, I'm okay with that because it's better than being lonely. But I am single. I am dating. This is the first time in my 40 years of life that I've been this single. Usually, you know, you you know, we date, we meet this one person and, and we're stuck. We give them all of our attention. We give them our all. And then when it fails, then you're like, hey, was it even the best candidate out of the lineup that I had? It's because we don't get time to know people. We don't get time to enjoy different people and choose what, you know, what fits you best. This time in my life, that's what I'm doing. I'll be 40 in February. And I mean, I'm dating, I'm single, and may the best man win. Until then, I'm just in enjoying the experience. I'll be 40. Guys, I warned you about this. These women are childless. They are single. They are desperate. They were out there for the last over 20 years getting the back blown out by Poncho, Poncho, and Sancho. And now they want to turn around. And, and find a so-called good man. And a lot of these women have had multiple deletions of gestations, all right, if you get what I'm saying. And, they're, and they think that they deserve a good man. Guys, no man wants to be with a woman who's even done that one time, except for simps. If I hear that a woman has even done that one time, it, it, it destroys, it, it kills something inside of me. It, 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 it's like, it's... It, it makes me so sad and it's so painful and it's so heartbreaking. Like I like, bro, I don't want to be in a relationship. Like, you know, do you live your life, be your, live your best life, go and find your simp that will make you happy. But I'm not the one. And a lot of men are like that where they're like, yeah, you know what, sis, I don't want to be with you. All right. If you're that type of individual and modern women can't accept these facts. And now, and here she is, she's been out there in the streets for decades and now she's looking for a man to subsidize her living and she wants to let them know let the men know that she's not going to be physically intimate with them at least not right away because she's looking for something serious like holy cow and unfortunately you still have a lot of these simps on these television shows that are basically willing to compromise and you know settle for just about anything it's like some of these individual some of these you know people with the kitties are absolutely rancid like bro this is not attractive at all and they're out here demanding the 666 guys six pack six figures six feet six feet tall this does not align with reality it really does not align with reality but you've got the simps who are agents of the state that are still pushing this propaganda okay and guys like guys i see i see stuff like oh gen zers are purchasing more homes than their parents generation did and i'm like that's absolute bs Everyone's like, that's BS. Gen Z is like, that's, that's BS. But it's propaganda. 
all right? Oh, millennials are making far more money than their parents did at their age. That's total BS. Have you adjusted for inflation? All right? That's total, absolute BS. The amount of propaganda coming from the mainstream media at this point is sick. But, of course, they're lying about the economy, so if they, ha they have to also lie about the state of the world. They have to present things as things are going rosy and wonderful, even though, even if you have, you know, things burning down around you, they're going to tell you everything, could, things could never be better, all right? Because they're going to, they're using this, they're using the, this this, this uh, narrative to continually shape, you know, prev you know, keep people under control. It doesn't matter how bad it gets in reality. Guys, we could be, guys, we're in a, we've been in a deep recession for years now. And we're potentially already in a depression, and they will never admit to it. Okay, oh, even guys, you we can right now we have probably closer to thirty percent unemployment. All right, we could guys, we can everything could crash around us, and they would say everything is wonderful, nothing is wrong whatsoever. Okay, this is this it's the honest and goodness truth. The only moment that they might tell us semblance of the truth is when they can't hide hide it anymore because there's a paper trail. All right. Basically, follow. If you want to know the truth, just follow the money. Man, I tell y'all, Western society is such a sick, it's such a sick place. Western society and westernized societies, and it's no wonder that men are basically quickly getting their butts out, saying that you know what, we're not going to play this game. We're going to leave. We're going to walk away and stay away from this very, very sick society that we're now in. Because I, because have no doubt. Society is extremely sick. By the way, guys, don't forget to check out the Angry Guy Clubhouse. It's really awesome. It's a place where we all can go check. You know, I, I put out daily articles over there on a wide range of topics and subjects. It's really good. I have things like, and there's also a bunch of guides. For example, if you want to learn how to how to make money, we have the blueprint for escaping the rat race. Unlock the your path to passive income with our complete affiliate marketing guide for beginners. Mark Cuban's Billionaire Blueprint. Guys, we've got tons of things. How to build a thriving business empire and have fun while doing it. You know, we have extended videos for you guys and exclusive videos. We have podcasts. I drop daily videos. If you want to talk to me, we have a chat. You can jump into the chat. We can have conversations with one another. You can check out our archives. But it's pretty awesome, guys. It's really awesome. You know, it's a better platform than Patreon or Locals. And, you know, I can always reach out to you guys directly. You can reach out to me. So go and check it out. It's linked in the description, you know, guys. And, uh, yeah, that's something for you. I mean, what do you think regarding all – guys, what do you think regarding all of this? Women are panicking as their dating prospects decline. Let me know your name. Let me know your names. Ha. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think, and we'll talk about it in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA men walking away. And cheers.